So in this video, we will discuss the most common type of cataract, which is the nuclear sclerotic cataract. Sometimes this is abbreviated as NSC. We'll begin with a bit of background information, discuss how they're formed, talk about risk factors, and then conclude with the clinical presentation, evaluation, and grading of nuclear sclerotic cataracts. So recall that the lens has three main components. So there is the outer capsule, there is the inner nucleus, and then in between is the cortex. Now it turns out that cataracts can develop in different areas of the lens. For example, cortical spoking and posterior subcapsular cataracts both develop in the cortex, whereas nuclear sclerotic cataracts, of course, develop in the nucleus. And these will be the types of cataracts that we will focus on in this video. So nuclear sclerotic cataracts are the most common type of cataract, and they are age-related, meaning they are an inevitable process related to normal maturation of the lens. Often these progress slowly, and over time they can cause the lens to become brunescent or yellow-brown. Uh, cataracts also increase the size of the lens, and this can be problematic because it can push against the iris and therefore close the iridocorneal angle. And as a result, some patients with cataracts have an increased risk of angle closure glaucoma. Often these cataracts are most problematic when driving, particularly at night due to glare. So cataracts form over time as fibers, which are made of protein and water near the nucleus, thicken with age. And over time, these old fibers are not able to clear out of the way to make room for new fibers. And it is this crowding that leads to a cloudy or a hardened and enlarged lens. So one of the most significant risk factors for nuclear sclerotic cataracts is age, as I previously alluded to. Other factors that have been associated with an increased risk for nuclear sclerotic cataracts include a history of UVA radiation exposure, a history of smoking, eye trauma, as well as myopia. Patients with nuclear sclerotic cataracts present with blurry vision that does not improve. Typically, this is worse at night and is exacerbated by bright lights, around which they will often see halos or glares. Cataracts can also significantly dull the vividness of colors, and when severe, the cataract can actually be visualized externally as a cloudy lens. So this is an example of what a nuclear sclerotic cataract might look like on an anterior slit lamp exam. So here we see the cornea. In black is the anterior chamber, and this first segment that you see of the lens is, of course, the anterior capsule. Just beneath that is the cortex, and we can see both the anterior cortex and the posterior cortex, and in the middle, of course, is the nucleus. And we can see that in this particular example, the nucleus is very cloudy, and it's very opaque, and that's because this patient has a nuclear sclerotic cataract. So here are some other slit lamp photos showing nuclear sclerotic cataracts. On the left, you see a view of the eye in diffuse lighting, and you can see here that the cataract is most prominent centrally, and it's very cloudy and opaque. And on the right, you see a cataract with a slit beam. So here's the cornea, here is the anterior surface of the lens, and of course, the space in between is the anterior chamber. And as you can see, this cataract has caused the lens to become very brunescent or yellow-brown. Of course, nuclear sclerotic cataracts will worsen with age, so we need a way to monitor the progression of the cataract over time. And we do that by grading the cataract with trace or 1 plus as least severe and 4 plus as most severe. And these cataracts are typically best graded with the slit lamp light beam directed at about a 30 to 45 degree angle. So in an early nuclear sclerotic cataract, you will see that the central nucleus is actually more clear than the anterior and posterior sections of the cortex. As the cataract progresses, the nucleus becomes increasingly more dense. So for an NS2 plus cataract, the density of the nucleus is about equal to the anterior and posterior portions of the cortex. And for an NS3 plus cataract, the nucleus is denser than the anterior and posterior sections of the cortex. And when the nucleus becomes entirely opaque or brunescent, it's graded as NS4 plus. Now a Morgagnian cataract is one that has crossed the state of maturity and has become hypermature. So the cortex in this case has liquefied and this allows the nucleus to actually fall down in the lens. And here you can actually see the superior border of the nucleus. So interestingly, while the most common visual complaint of cataracts is worsening visual acuity, some patients who develop nuclear sclerotic cataracts can actually report improvement in their vision, particularly for close objects. 
And the reason this happens is because patients who develop cataracts are typically older than age 40. And virtually all patients over 40 have some extent of presbyopia, whereby their focal point is actually behind the retina. Now, as this cataract develops, the refractive power of the lens actually increases, which serves almost as a set of bifocals to help focus the patient's vision closer to the retina. Now, of course, this improvement is temporary, as the cataract will continue to progress, become more cloudy, and eventually worsen the patient's vision much more than it initially helped it.